My son Sims and I are, are ranching in basically Sterling County. Where we've got uh, places scattered from Glasscock County all the way to uh, Mitchell County. Primarily a cow-calf operation. Uh, we do still run uh, sheep. We have wool sheep and hair sheep. Uh, the, and uh, uh, diversity on this land is, is important. Uh, but it, it's, it's mainly cow-calf. On this place we're on right now, it is all cow-calf. Prescribed burning is, is a, uh, an excellent tool. It's going to give the land the opportunity to uh, uh, increase the grass response. Grass is a really exciting uh, commodity to me and in how resilient it is, how it over time with the, the buffalo herds and, and uh, uh, that came through uh, without man's presence, uh, the grass responds to fire. It responds to animal impact. Uh, and, and over the eons, that's how it established itself. And, and, and here we're trying to mimic that somewhat. Can't do it to all of our country. One of the problems with burning is uh, you can't get enough of it done. Uh, you're, you're worried, if I burn this pasture, is it going to quit raining? Am I going to have a need for that, what we call fuel, to, to feed to the cows and whatnot? And through our more uh, intensive grazing programs, we're able to raise a little more grass. And when we talk about burning, one of the most important things is it's just one of the tools in our toolbox. You've got to utilize all of them. Uh, you can't, uh, if you're going to have a successful burning program, you've got to have a good grazing management program. If you don't have the two working together, it ain't going to happen. You may get a lot of rainfall for a while and think, well, I can burn this pasture. Uh, but if you don't have that grazing management after you burn, you're probably going to hurt your resource. So it's all those things together that are they're so important. So one of the really cool things about prescribed burning or even a wildfire, so just fire in general, is that it's not a single one solution. So it's very difficult to just introduce fire onto a landscape and expect fire to cure all of your problems. But fire complements other management strategies really, really well. So if you can tweak your grazing management to fit into a fire rotation, you're achieving the best of both worlds. If you can burn a pasture in a really hot summer fire and then defer it for one growing season afterwards, all you've done is just maximize your forage poten potential. Um, in West Texas, we are oftentimes uh, blessed with frequent droughts, and those droughts can oftentimes push back your prescribed burning or push back your brush control regimen or your schedule, and that's okay as long as you're thinking about those different aspects of a prescribed burning leading up, to, leading up to it. So in general, we recommend it takes about one year of planning before you implement a prescribed burn. And that planning encompasses your grazing management prior to the burn and your grazing management afterwards. Uh, oftentimes folks believe that they have to immediately defer following a prescribed burn, but your goals and objectives dictate your grazing regimen before and after that burn. For example, prickly pear control. If you're trying to burn for prickly pear control, most oftentimes a flash graze following that prescribed burn can be very beneficial for that pear because it's now became a more palatable food source. So lots of different options are available before, even during, and even after a prescribed burn. I got into burning because my father has been burning for most of his life. He's seen what a valuable tool it is. Uh, I went to the prescribed fire school and I've become a prescribed burn manager myself and uh, was an invaluable throw all the burning and knowledge I had from my dad. It taught me a lot of things uh, as far as weather, data collection, of the, the fuel. It was just a great resource. Even with that and with the knowledge we have to, between us, we still admit fully that we don't know everything about fire and we still use the NRCS as an invaluable tool to help us out in the fires. Uh, even if it's just to take our plan to them and say, hey, does this plan work? And they may say, okay, it looks good, but we still want them there on the ground with us because uh, sometimes they see problems that we didn't see, that we overlooked. And so they're a very invaluable tool for us. So Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, oftentimes, especially in the range world, we serve as the middleman. 
and most oftentimes we partner up with amazing folks uh, like the NRCS. NRCS is all about the producer, all about the landowner. And so they are doing such amazing things over there and they really try to be timely with their management strategies. And so we at AgriLife Extension love to partner up with NRCS because they are so timely in what they are trying to accomplish with rangeland management. And it's, it's really a win-win situation. Uh, not only do they uh, implement lots of inno different innovative strategies, but they're also interested in training and keeping folks um, uh, really updated on their training and, and really keeping boots on the ground uh, for all different types of, of range management. Prescribed fire helps the resource of the land in the fact that it restores nutrients into the ground. It gets problem species out of the way, such as your prickly pear and your cedar. Helps knock that brush down, open up areas that didn't have animals going into it before because it was too tight. Um, so running that fire through it really gets those problem species out of the way, allows the animals to go in there, get that hoof action on it, break the soil up, allow grass forbs, more beneficial plants to grow in place of it. Every single wildlife species that we have in Texas needs fire to some degree. Now whether that's from the habitat that that fire creates after the burn or whether that's just the release of all these nutrients that flood the system following a fire or during a fire, um, our wildlife need fire. And in the prescribed burns that I've been on, uh, most oftentimes you'll see open flame and you'll see white-tailed deer moving through the area. You'll see lots of bobwhite quail. And they, it's almost instinctive to those wildlife species. The second they smell smoke or they, they feel that fire in that area, they will congregate to wherever that fire is. And so to me, fire really represents a systems approach to everything on rangelands. The processes generated from fire unlike, are unlike any other management strategy we have out there. We get benefits that herbicide can't compare to, that grazing can't compare to. Now, I'm not saying fire is your cure-all single bullet answer, but it does produce a lot of different nutrient response, responses, both below ground and above ground, that we don't see with any other management strategy. So fire entering into the picture on our rangelands, on our landscapes, is where we really start to see results.